Hi everybody, Mr. Farmer here, and today we're talking about comparative advantage. Now, instead of going through and giving a whole lecture on this, I'm actually just going to be focusing on um, an example that we're going to go through. So for comparative advantage, chapter 5, for what we're talking about, uh, we're looking at specialization, and later it goes into uh, trade as well, so we'll come back to it for international economics. So for compare advantage, there's kind of five steps I like to go through. Okay, the first one is find the comparative advantage. Second is find the trade range. Third, find the terms of trade. That's going to be like the negotiated levels of how much of good one for good two, etc. Find the number of trades. And the last one is going to be finding the economic gains. So there's kind of two potential scenarios that this would be asked about. So I'll kind of go through uh, each one. Okay, so we're going to be going through these five or so steps. So first off, let's come up with a little scenario. So the scenario I've come up with today is we have companies X and why and they make goods they make um getting ready for halloween in my household so we're getting ready for butterfingers and milky ways which i don't know if maybe actually still eat anymore but butterfingers and milky ways okay so company x if they we have our butterfingers and we have our milky ways if they specialize in butterfingers they can make 10 butterfingers and zero milky ways and if they specialize in Milky Ways, they'll have 0 and 20. And if they do a little bit of both, they have 5 and 5. And then we're going to have company or country Y, I'm not sure what I said, their Butterfingers and their Milky Ways. And a lot of times this is given to us, what I'm doing right now, um, in word language, just given us in the scenarios, uh, or it will be given to us uh, with like a production possibility curve, for instance. And we're being asked to do that. Okay, so why if they specialize, they can do 50 and 0, or 0 and 50 for the um, Milky Ways, or 10 of each. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to kind of pull this down a little bit. Um, and we're going to go into this. We're going to have X and Y, Butterfingers, Milky Ways, Butterfingers, Milky Ways. And I'm just going to take these specialized numbers. So I'm going to say, okay, they can do 10. That's where this 10 is from. And they can do 20. That's where this 20 is from. And I'm just assuming that these are the specialized numbers because I'm writing it down. So I don't have to look at all this stuff. We're going to come back to this little row right here. I'm just going to put in red so we can really remember what we're missing out on. So we're going to come back to this later on. Okay. And then we have 50 and 50 over here. So right now we're looking at comparative advantage or kind of first step. Let me kind of move this down a little bit. So in order to get comparative advantage, what we want to do is we want to try to simplify one side. Now, I just do whatever's on the left-hand side. It could, doesn't matter. I could do what's on the right. So I want to try to figure out how much does it cost for countrywide to produce one Butterfinger, meaning when they pour in, their factors of production, the land they were capital entrepreneur abilities, if they pour all this into putting into one Butterfinger, their opportunity cost of using all these resources 100% towards the Butterfinger is, therefore they're making no Milky Ways. So what do they give up? Well, how do I get this? Well, what I do is simply divide by 10, because I want to simplify this down. 10 divided by 10 is 1. And whatever I do on one side of the equation, because it's a ratio, I have to do it to the other side. Which means each time I make one Butterfinger, country X makes one Butterfinger, they're giving up opportunity of producing two units of Milky Ways. I do the same thing over here. I'm dividing by 50 over here, because again, I want to be one Butterfinger, and 50 divided by what is one? Divided by 50. Okay, so now I can look at this. So whatever's on this right-hand side over here, this is the opportunity cost. This is what they gave up in order to do this. And so in order to produce one unit of Butterfinger, Country Y gave up one unit of Milky Ways. Country X gave up two. Well, because two is greater than one, 
That means that country Y has the lower opportunity cost to produce butterfingers. So since this is lower, Y has the compared advantage in butterfingers. I could do this in reverse and check the numbers, but mathematically it's impossible to have a compare advantage in both. So the default is the reciprocal math is going to prove that A has it uh, for Milky Ways. Okay, so that was compared advantage. Next, trade range. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these numbers I just got, I'm going to plug into it for these. So this is part two, trade range. Now, because I did this in terms of the butterfinger from up here, so I'm going to keep that as the case. So one butterfinger should be traded for more than one Milky Way because this is the cost to the seller and they want to make sure they make some money. Okay, so it needs to be greater than that amount but less than the opportunity cost, the producing level for the people who are buying it because if they can make it for two uh, Milky Ways, they want to buy it for less than two Milky Ways. So this is called the trade range and anything that fits into X would work. So there's my third or my second part, trade range. What comes next? Number three, terms of trade. Terms of trade is find the value that fits X. So one unit of B is equal to 1.5 units of Milky Ways. That makes sense. That works. Okay. So there's our terms of trade. The next we get into number of trades. In order to do this, we need to have had the trade, uh, the terms of trade uh, figured out first off, and we need to know the compare advantage. So we need to kind of use these before we get to the number of trades. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of rewrite some stuff over here. Okay, so I'll try to use this space over here. So for step four, for the number of trades, what I like to do is I look at the available resources divided by the terms of trade we just found. Okay, so let me kind of zoom out and move around because I may need some information from this. Uh, you notice I put the CA up here, that's so I can keep track of things. Okay, so I'm gonna do Butterfingers first since I was on the left. So this is gonna be country Y, and they had butterfingers and they have 50 butterfingers and each time they trade they trade one butterfinger that's the terms of trade down here on the bottom left which means they can trade 50 times before they run out of resources okay on the other side we're going to have country x and they have a compare advantage over here and each time they trade they're going to trade 1.5 times Okay, so 20 divided by 1.5 is going to be approximately 13 and one third. Yes, I used a calculator to do that. I didn't just happen to know off the top of my head. That happens because I just made these numbers up pretty uh, briefly. So they're going to, I'm going to round down. So they're going to trade 13 times. The reason why is whichever the number is less, that's how many trades because this group isn't going to trade an extra 37 times for resources that country X doesn't have. Okay, so. Let's kind of pull out all the info that we have so we can do the last thing, economic gains. Okay, so first off, they're going to trade 13 times. We just found that out. And each time they're going to trade, they're going to trade from number three right here in terms of trade, one Butterfinger for 1.5 Milky Ways. Okay, so for economic gains, what we need to do is I compare the after specialization and trade. So after I figured out who ends up with what and we trade everything else, I'm comparing it to the before specialization. That's the stuff I put in that red box. 
from earlier. It's if they had to decide to just do it themselves. If I find the difference between these two things, I find the economic gains, which is, did I make the right choice? Did I make the right economic decision to work with country X or country Y or whatever else it is? Now, I'm going to do this in terms of country Y. Okay, so what, how did country Y, what are the economic gains for them? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rewrite this uh, up here a little bit, um, but I'm only going to look at these specialized numbers. So I'm going to have country X and country Y. They have their butterfingers and their Milky Ways. They specialize, made zero butterfingers and 20 over here. And then we have our butterfingers and our Milky Ways. And they made 50 over here and zero over here. And now I'm going to plug in all this data I did before. So let me zoom in. Okay, so they're trading 13 times. And after 13 trades with one butterfinger being traded each time, that's 13 times one, they're going to trade 13 units of butterfingers, which leaves me, so 50 minus 13 is going to leave me with 37. This 13 is going to go over to here because I'm trading it over there. They're going to end up with 13. And then after 13 times, uh, 13 trades with 1.5 trades each time, that ends up being 19.5. So subtract 19.5. And again, yes, I did use the calculator for that because I get to do those kinds of things. And we'd be traveling that over to here. On FRQs, they do make the numbers so that you can do this with just in your head. You don't have to do these weird calculators. And maybe you can do that in your head, but I need help. Okay, so now I have my after specialization. So again, I'm plugging into this right here. So I just figured out the after specialization. The before specialization is what I put into the box way up here. It was 10 and 10. So minus 10 and minus 10. So country Y gained 27 units of B and 9.5 units of M of the Milky Ways. These are the economic gains for country Y. If you followed along and it makes sense, congratulations. Now the very beginning I told you there was two things of ways of doing this. And here is the second way of doing this. Going back to kind of the original statements, we're going to instead say what is this economy's economic gains. Here's a nice part. In order to do this, we go step one, and then we jump to step five. We don't need to do the second, third, or fourth spot, which is really nice. Now we already figured out the comparative advantage, so I'm already gonna plug into that. So here's how I like to do this. I say country X and country Y combined, what could they do? Butterfinger, Milky Way. Well, I know that country Y is going to do Butterfinger. They could produce 50 units. Again, we did this from the first round. You would have had to do this from the beginning. Country X is, has compare advantage in M, and they can produce 20 units. Okay. Then, if they had not specialized, what could they have done? Well, I'm going to subtract this. And country X would have had 5 units of B. And Y would have had 10 units of Y. So 15. So by working together, they have 50 units. If they work by themselves, we want to have 15. So they've gained 35 units as an economy, as a whole group. And do the same thing for the next one. Uh, country X would have made 5 units of M and 10 units from country Y over here for again another 15. So they gain another five units of M. So we like these questions because I'm all done. Again, you have had to figure out the compare advantage. So we would have done this step first 
And then after instead of going through all the craziness we did, just straight to there. So that's how you do economic gains. There's that that is everything that you could have. Again, the numbers might play differently, but these are the steps. Find the compare advantage. And if it's a long one, find the trade range, find the terms of trade, find the number of trades, and then plug in for the economic gains. Or you can plug in and go straight over there. Hopefully that helped. See you next time.